All right. Hmm. What's up, YouTube? How are you guys doing? Uh, today is November seventeenth, and today analysis day. Uh, this week my analysis uh, queue is literally the largest it's ever been in my two and a half years of doing analysis. And so um, all of it is not going to be on this video. I'm going to split it into two parts. I'm going to do four of, this, uh, four of the sets today and the four of the sets either tomorrow or Friday. Uh, well, three of the sets because the last one is actually Sonic versus Goichi and I want to do a separate video for that. But uh, yeah, it started here. Mm -mm. This is a submission from t Socks, who is watching my stream apparently. I can see my Abby. on the left. I believe this is Mizi. Um, on the right, it looks like a Mizi team to me. Uh, and okay. So before we even start, right? <clears throat> One of the things I always caution, uh, or I always suggest, is when you're going, when you're about to start a game of Dragon Ball Fighters, it brings you to this screen always. It always brings you to the loading screen. Tells you your opponent's team. Tells them their assists, right? And so at this point, you should be thinking about, okay, where do I need to put myself on the screen against his team, right? Because interacting with your opponent's assists and, and you know, making it as difficult as possible for them to get like free neutral wins and free pressure is, uh, is you know, you'll see a lot of improvement if you switch to, to really paying attention to your opponent's research. So uh, Mises' team in particular is um is two short range assists so he doesn't have anything that covers him long range and so uh which you should expect especially because he's playing gogeta point who doesn't have key blast game is for him to try to force his way in using like beam into ex uh, which has hard counterplay if you reflect the beam you can backdash full punish um the ex reka that he does and so <clears throat> that's something i would be looking out for but uh overall like you don't really want to be scrambling in the mid range with this team. Uh, it's something that this team does very well. And so you should be focusing on your long range engagement uh, and kind of making it difficult for him to get in and get his pressure started. <clears throat> because like I said, he, he just doesn't really have the team to contend with their long range. And so you should be focused on that. And that's something that you should think about uh, whenever you load into games. This is the type of thing you should think about anytime that you're on this loading screen. Always want to pay attention uh, because a lot of people like get thrown off um or they don't think hard enough about it or even even worse they assume that their opponent is running a certain type of assist but they're running a different assist and that completely can change uh how we go about things especially in the neutral and so uh you really want to be thinking from from you know before the game even starts you want to get your get your thought processes going into EX all before yeah. so uh, one of the most important resources in this game that not a ton of people think about is the knockdown resource and so when you, when you get hit here <clears throat> you can see the camera so so think this game does a, a, a pretty it makes it easier to realize when something like this is gonna happen because it uh, it changes it literally changes the camera angle whenever smash animations happen and so <clears throat> when he starts his combo and you get ex here right you notice that he spends down smash here <clears throat> meaning that he cannot he, he can now he can't down smash you again uh, ie get an skd unless he air dragon rushes the only other way he can get skd from this point and so <clears throat> the moment that you see it spent early, like when you when you see, you know, a smash animation play out and, you know, the combo continues afterwards. And this happens with people. Um, it's not the, doing EX Rekka again doesn't give you the good SKD that we're talking about. <clears throat> but anyway, fucking idiot. Uh, <laughs> um, you, the camera angle changes and then 
um he does an air combo and then he right <clears throat> he puts you in this situation is right he does uh j to h j to h i think it is i think it's j to h vegeta he doesn't have smash property anymore so he doesn't it this does not uh you can see the camera angle doesn't change because he spent his smash property already so this is something you want to be ready for because you can actually hold down right if you hold down here uh <clears throat> your character will like kind of flatten out on the ground delay wake up uh and whatever kind of like gimmicky reset he goes for just like well it'll just whiff and <clears throat> now of course he's running barrier assist and so like you have to worry about him like you know whiffing and then mashing barrier but at the very least you're not going to get needed uh from something like that so <clears throat> so he's gonna put you in the same situation again yeah you should be holding down on these you don't have to actually spark there you can hold down, then it misses, and then uh, kind of see what's going to happen afterwards. He might try to overextend and press a button, and then you get a punish. Uh, if he ends up actually like forcing you to block, then you can choose to spark afterwards. But uh, that that can save you a resource by just knowing um, by knowing what resources you have available to you. If you delay wake up in this situation, you don't really want to press command grab uh, because there's a chance of him just landing. <clears throat> before your command grab actually makes contact uh and it can be difficult it can be difficult to like respond um and i think that's kind of the problem that he had here is that he just kind of there's a lot of things happening very very quick and i think it's kind of overwhelming for him so i don't expect him to press command grab here so so the thing is right so a, a lot of times in this game there's these situations that that present themselves and it's very important to realize that uh, in situations like these, getting the hit is not actually what matters. What actually matters is escaping the situation. And so, like, I don't want to implant this idea of, oh, you should be pressing something here, because that shows a lack of prioritization. Right? Your kid boosts low health. You have two full health characters. Your number one focus should by far be escape rotation <clears throat> so that you can manage your health effectively. You try to go for some type of response, like if you try to mash, or you try to, like, you know, press something try to get the hit back and you risk getting counter hit and dying and just losing your character for free. and so i wouldn't I, I wouldn't just focus on escaping there so like <clears throat> more to the point here right you call assist here like tag would be a good good response here instead of assist <clears throat> just because even if you did force him to be locked down in this situation with the assist you're not really getting a whole lot uh, and you're also playing against a DP character, so like even a DP will kill you here. And so that fundamentally changes how we run our pressure. You have to think about a lot. <clears throat> you have to think about a lot of shit. <clears throat> so like in this situation, should never yeah, ideally, right? Because of the way defense works in this game and how good the resources are. <laughs> um. This situation should not be happening uh very often at all where you know your first character dies and your two your two other characters are full health and that's because there's so many opportunities uh for character rotation there's guard cancel there's uh rot tag of course <clears throat> that compounded uh, on compounded on top of like having sparking resource and everything your special tag as well you could do like tag um there's there's a lot of things that you can <clears throat> and so like this should not be happening very often and it'll be really hard for you to win games if things like this happen so <clears throat> one thing that i'm noticing is uh when you tech <clears throat> when you tech from like a, a stray hit or a drop combo you like burn double jump immediately this is extremely extremely dangerous and let me explain why. Okay, so from this situation, your opponent is down here. You cannot see him, right? Like you have no idea. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. My poor thing. Okay, it should work now. Right, okay. So you have no idea where your opponent is. He's down here, right? Okay, now you have spent your double jump. <clears throat> and he is now running under you. So at this point, if you're going to land, right? <clears throat> the problem is that you have no way to change your, your air trajectory. And so your opponent can kind of predict where you're going to be because you're forced 
<clears throat> you're forced to land uh, in, in a way. Now you could crank a super dash. You could press vanish, right? There's a lot of things that you could do here, but the problem is that most of the things that you choose, an overwhelming majority of them, all lose to 2H. And so like burning this double jump here early is really bad because not only can he just sit there and wait for you to choose an option and 2H you for it, he could also run underneath you, right? You have no defensive assist to cover yourself. <clears throat> he could just dash up assist, gel you to the ground. He could go for an air to air. It's very hard for you to get the hit here because your buttons are just not going to hit someone approaching from underneath you. And so <clears throat> when you choose your tech option, you want to be very, very important about spending this double jump early. Uh, and, and to that extension, like spending double jump egregiously in general is a big problem that a lot of players have. And so you really want to try to hold this double jump as long as you can. It just gives you more flexibility and uh, that enables you to be a, a little bit more elusive in the neutral game. So this is what I was talking about before, where like you're trying to run this pressure, right? He can kill you even off of his invulnerability. And so this is the type of thing you want to be looking out. A lot of people don't like letting characters live, it turns out, uh, to the extent where they'll they'll super overextend or choose really crazy options to try to get that kill by any means necessary. And so if you're just a little bit more patient and mindful of the options that your opponent has, uh, they can often hang you like free damage and free ways to get your character out. He actually drops here. Okay, this is the a really hard punish. Like, and what I mean by that is like he should have eaten like 80% of his life here for this. You just press reflect, press 5M, uh, and you nuke his character. Can't be a, uh, can't can't afford to miss something like. This. You could also press 22S there if you really wanted to, but. Don't expect you to. Okay, we're gonna get out. Could have sparked. What are you talking about? He didn't spark though. That's reactable. <laughs> Turns out you can tell the difference between someone doing DP Vanish and DP Spark. So you did it here, but not before. Feels bad. You can actually kill him in, in situations like this. So, like, the problem with the one of the problems with UIA is that, like, it's a vertical assist, right? And so, like, it goes, like, straight up. <clears throat> and when you, when you knock someone down in this game, most of the trajectories are diagonal, right? And so it could be really awkward to like find the point of intersection between these two. <clears throat> that being said, like it's worth, it's probably worth going for it. Um, and this is something that you'll want to take to the lab and see like how you can extend mid screen that assist it. <clears throat> something should be possible here and he probably should have died, but maybe you felt a little uncomfortable going for it given the circumstance. Mm -mm. But when people hand us free characters, we want to take the free characters. Miss Needy, and you didn't, you didn't respond in time to you going to the other side. Mm -mm. Don't have to vanish here. Yeah, okay. you can actually just super dash follow up, kill him. Probably just panicked and was like, "Oh shit, stuff's going crazy. I just want to kill him," but. I have to spend the meter there. Does a wall bounce. This 
This is really close, actually. He almost vanished right into, into the UI assist. That's very, very close. Before I talked about, um, I talked about how like your team has a long range advantage here because you're running, you're running beam, right, and you're playing Kid Buu, who has pretty strong long range tools in general as long as you know what to use when, and so you also have UIA in case like someone tries to, uh, quote unquote skip neutral and like just like YOLO a super dash in on you, uh, and try to you know start start offense that way, and so. Uh -uh. For that reason, anytime you're playing with this dynamic where you have the better long range game than your opponent, you don't really want to play committal round start. The reason is because you're going to start the match with a guess. Uh -uh. And the risk reward associated with this is just not in your favor because there's a lot of things that you could choose that <clears throat> you wouldn't even get much off of uh, or a very low percentage for you to get the hit with in the first place. And so like a lot of the time, even if you don't immediately get punished off of the round start, you give your opponent an avenue to get in for free, right? And that's a problem against this team because like I said, we wanna play around the range of these assists. That's our main goal is to play around, is to play around these. <clears throat> and so you wanna make it, you wanna focus on creating distance between you and your opponent first. And then whenever he tries to do these things like beam into Rekka or he, you know, super dashes you or whatever, then we want to be ready to respond with, you know, either UI, UI assist or one of our anti airs or a button or pretty much whatever. But mm -mm, like you going for stomp here means that only if he chooses to stay on the ground on, on round start, does he actually get hit here and doesn't block his legs, right? But if he chooses like jump, he gets in for free. If he chooses like Rekka, I don't know if this actually hits him. I'm not sure how the round start interaction works with, with uh, round start Rekka and it'd be one M. <clears throat> but like backdash would also be a problem. Round start assist call would be another problem, <clears throat> right? Because if he calls barrier, then you would stomp the barrier. Uh, and like, then you're just kind of fucked, <laughs> kind of fucked from there. And so you can see there's a lot of ways that this can go wrong. So it's probably not worth it for you to choose a committal round start in this situation, especially when your opponent has been showing that he's just going to play extremely aggressive. Yeah, delay wake up mash. Nice. Going a little bit more initiative than last game. Really important against a player like Nizi, right? It's very important to have the answers to common scenarios because what Nizi likes to do is he likes to steal turns a lot, uh, like a lot. And so like you need to make sure that whenever he puts himself minus or punishable, that you're taking your punish <clears throat> and don't second guess yourself or else he will just steal turn after turn after turn. It will feel overwhelming and it will snowball out of control. You need to work on your, your offensive transition a little bit. Like, for example, you take the SKD here, right? <clears throat> um, I don't like Key Blast here on this particular Oki. And the reason is if he decides to YOLO wake up DP, you actually still get hit because it will involve through the Key Blast and hit you. It does travel diagonally. And so you're better off just going for an actual safe jump with a button. Um, if he reflects, it's fine. You still have two assists available. And it's also very hard to reflect Kid Buu in general. Um, so a lot of people just like won't even take the chance. But if he does, fine. He reflects, you will land on the ground. You're still able to respond afterwards. So don't worry about this. Just take the safe jump in case he DPs. Uh, especially whenever he's been showing that he will DP. <clears throat> and it will make this transition a lot better. <clears throat> and also be careful about offensive rotations. What I mean by offensive rotation is a lot of people have this idea in their mind that they're going to try one option, and they're going to try the next option, and they're going to try next option, right, in that order. <clears throat> and so, like, people will try, like, you know, the 6M, and then they'll try doing a cross-up, and they're like, okay, I have no assist, I'm going to Dragon Rush, right? Yeah, be really careful about not becoming patterned in your offense. 
<clears throat> because the more pattern it is the easier it is for your opponent to respond and the worst possible thing for you is having a kid boo that is easy to block right that's not the reason we pick this character pick this character because it's very hard to block and so you want to make sure that you're taking steps to make it difficult <clears throat> icebound with four months thank you appreciate you Very good. See, this is what I mean. So, like in this situation, Easy tried to mash. He had no business mashing here at all, um, because he gets hit. He gets hit by five M, right? Meaning that you are definitely plus, and he mashes, right? And you get a whole another hit. You get a reset hit for it. <clears throat> he had no business pressing there, and so we get a free hit. We actually kill him here as well. in the future right mm -mm, you do have two assists here to extend right also keep in mind that you have um so kid boo ui has the property where if you do grounded kid boo level one into ui dhc at the top so what you want to do is you want to land and then you do uh you do super with kid boo and then whenever your opponent is pushed to the very top of the super you dhc into ui and if you do that you get 200 extra damage on your DHC, it's very important. <clears throat> and so, um, in situations like this where you get the hit, um, it's very beneficial for you to try to end in like Air Dragon Rush, right? Because Air Dragon Rush will guarantee you that you get the SKD that you need. You have enough time to land in super um, and whatnot. And so that can cut down on the amount of meter that you have to spend. Wow, really be like that. Yeah, I don't like you choosing committal round stars, like I said before. Same same reason. So many ways it can go wrong for you. Okay. So you can't can't second guess yourself so if you're gonna if you're gonna kid boo here right do a string just commit to the string right mm -mm. because at this point right Mizi has, has uh showing you that like he's not trying to block he's not trying to block at all and so like you want to focus on true stringing him and frame trapping him as much as possible and so especially if you call kid boo here you might as well just do a string because under normal circumstances Right, a lot of people don't want to commit to full strings while doing kid boo because your 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 frame advantage matters. Like when you when you release from your block string, <clears throat> where you are in that block string matters for how much advantage you get on kid boo. <clears throat> in this situation though, you don't have to worry about it because if you do a string with buttons, you can cancel into empty vanish no matter what you do, even on whiff. Right, and so that means you could even start up a move and cancel into empty vanish, uh, and to get consistent advantage. And so like that's what you want to do here you just want to true string him make sure that he blocks the kid boot then empty vanish and then you just mix him from there uh and pretty much anything that you're going to do is going to jail because kid boo has absurd amounts of blocks done so uh don't second guess yourself here you already you already did the hard part you'll probably if you do that correctly you probably force him you might even force him to spark here mm -mm, even though he's full health because he's the type of player that doesn't want to give up advantage no matter what okay here Autopilot, right? Auto autopilot on defense. You reflect to him quite a lot. There's a ton of things that you can do on defense instead. So reflecting is not necessarily bad here. Mm -mm. Uh, it really depends on like the team that they're running does. So if he would have done like jump in plus 17 assist, you get cooked either way. Even if you, even if you would have reflected uh, and done like tag or something, you get you get fucked, right? Because 17 assists is a barrier and then it is a hit afterwards. And so you want to be aware of all the defensive options you have available to you. Flex is fine, right? But you have a ton of things you can do aside from reflect button. Like jump. <clears throat> I was talking about reflect tag earlier. Probably don't want to choose that here, right? <clears throat> Some people like to like... Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to put that in your mind. <laughs> I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to put that in your mind. Uh, what's really good is like reflect assist as well, right? Because what, what happens a lot is you reflect their jump in and a lot of a lot of people reflect tag here right and so like 
uh slightly more experienced players will sometimes do a jump in and then they'll just wait right they'll just sit here and wait to react to your raw attack sound and then 2h you so that, so they can answer raw attack however you know some people overcommit and they don't actually recognize that it's a raw tag before pressing the 2h and they kind of autopilot and so like you pressing reflect and then pressing like kid boo assist he might just whiff 2h right he might just press the 2h thinking that you're tagging but you're not um <clears throat> and so like you would get a free hit there uh because he'd be forced to either panic vanish or just eat the kid boo assist right and either one of them is is very easy to confirm off of so just be aware that you don't always have to press reflect into button right sometimes just the reflect is enough reflecting into movement is most of the time better than reflect and commitment especially when your back is the corner right you're at sparking disadvantage your character is one hit from dying there's a lot of reasons that you wouldn't want to press a button here Maybe a Miss Super Dash or a Moon Jump. Okay, you press the wrong one. Gotta make sure that when you're doing this, you press 1M. You press, I believe this is 3M. But once again, right? This looks really fucked up, right? And it is, but only if you wake up immediately, right? Once again, it's a soft knockdown. Meaning that you have delay wake up available to you and shit like this will literally just whiff on you if you learn to incorporate it. Mostly, right? Mostly your, your issues in the set came from uh, just kind of uh, not not recognizing what options you have available to you, right? And so what I mean by that is you're not paying enough attention to resources, right? Effective zones, we talk about where we wanna be on the screen against our opponents and their assists, right? That's really important, but more so, right? Expenditure of double jump, really important. I wanna hold this double, your double jump is your life in this game, I promise you. I promise you, believe me when I tell you, your double jump is your lifeline. Without it, you can't do a lot of things. A lot of things that you just straight up cannot do without being punished really hard. And so you need to focus on holding your double jump more. Mm -mm. Think about what it means to defend, right? Mm -mm. This is something that a lot of people don't really think about. Defense is not, uh, when, when you're put onto defense in this game, a lot of people feel very overwhelmed and they feel like they have, you know, not a lot of things they can do. It's actually not the case. But to the inexperienced, it might seem that way, and that's because you're not used to using all of your defensive, uh, all of your defensive options in tandem, right? When defense becomes strong, this game is defense favored, and what we mean by that is, you know, having, having, um, you have such a myriad of options available to you at any given time, and whenever someone that is, someone that is aware of all the options and when to use them, uses them, you know, where they're most likely to work. That's when things feel really bad for the offender. And so like, there are more things that you can do than you think, right? It's not just, you know, block until you try to mash, right? Think about all the defensive mechanics that there are in this game. Reflect, vanish, guard cancel, guard cancel vent, raw tag, barking, right? And then character specific options, DPs, anti-air and vulnerability, right? There's a ton of things in this game that you can do. <clears throat> And so like, don't, uh, cause I've seen you, I've seen you talk uh, in chat about, you know, you, you feel like I might as well give up if I'm blocking. That's actually not the way that this game works. Uh, I, in fact, most of the time you're actually winning when you're blocking uh, because when you're blocking, there are things that your opponent cannot do, 
<clears throat> there's there's things that your opponent cannot do to you and so it makes it easier to deal with those things because you don't have to worry about as many options and so don't think about the game as you know if i block i'm automatically losing you always have a fighting chance right always do you need to think harder about what it means to defend right so that's important also on top of that right successful defense does not always result in a hit right really important a successful defense is alleviation of pressure it's not oh i hit my opponent right and that's why a lot of people feel like you know it's either block or mash because they're they have this idea that in order for my defense to be successful i have to get the hit it's actually not the case if i am you know back to corner and my opponent has two assists and you know i'm just not in a great situation any way that i can get out of this very bad positional uh this very bad positional disadvantage and move into the mid screen and stop my opponent from pressuring me is a win i don't even need the hit because positioning will win you games alone right if you focus more on where you need to be on the screen and putting putting yourself in the right places hits will come naturally mm, to the point where you'll be like oh shit, i didn't even I didn't. and that happens that definitely happens uh where you know you you make you, you're you have such a strong positional advantage that a hit kind of just falls in your lap because your opponent either overextends uh or they make a mistake but it doesn't matter because we're positioned well and we're ready to deal with pretty much anything that our opponent does so you should think about that think about that really 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 hard because i think that's where you're having the most trouble right now. you're having a really hard time defending uh and your characters have decent defensive options that they can use <clears throat> and you know going hand in hand with that uh, i was talking about how Mizi in particular likes to steal a bunch of turns right and it might feel overwhelming to you and it's going to feel overwhelming to you until you learn how to use your defensive mechanic right mm -mm. There, there's a lot more things that you can do mm -mm. when i tell people don't let people steal turns right they're like okay well i'll just start mashing more well it's not actually that simple that's not that's not what i'm saying i'm not just saying just mash on his block strings every time he does something but really pay attention what type, what is your opponent doing right what is your opponent doing to you look to see what they're doing try to formulate in your head what you need to do in order i think you'll have a lot easier okay uh next set is from um uh okay justin's next <clears throat> Maybe you missed an input on this round start. Well, like you're AFK. Game started. Yeah. Almost worked out in your favor. Yeah. So, Nep's team is going to be much better at scrambling. Thing your team is going to be and so like similarly like i told t socks you kind of want to focus more on the long range um within reason right because his team does have projectile and vulnerability to characters uh, and they also have like pretty decent skill skips in general <clears throat> but that being said this is not a team that you want to be like putting yourself in the mid-range scramble right because like if you look at the options that your opponent has most of the time they're going to be stronger than yours with the exception of vegeta vegeto can press 5m Right, but like Blue Goku has tackle, Kefla has Lariat, right? Goes through projectiles, hits low. Our, our SSJ Vegeta has rocket kick. Um, <clears throat> and so like these options are kind of hard to maneuver around in the mid range for your team. <clears throat> now that being said, like your long range and your short range are pretty good. Like you're fine from back here. You're also fine whenever like you're like right on top of each other, like literally this close, right? Because that's where uh, cartwheel gets enabled, right? Uh, where you're able to press cartwheel on defense in response to like a jump in <clears throat> stuff like that is really good uh but mostly you want to stay out of this uh this mid-range scramble like if it's a battle of buttons uh if a, it's if it's a battle of buttons on the point character don't really want to fuck with blue goku there it's like kind of any snowballs like really really hard to be really careful 
And you're playing the assist that you, that kind of enable playing really lame as well. So you should focus on that, <laughs> especially against comps like this. A good tag. <clears throat> okay. Gives you a free hit there. Most of the time you won't get that hit, uh, especially because most people recognize that whenever you only have a key blast assist available, the pressure is kind of temperamental. It's like way easier to defend than normal, but uh, Nep hands you a free character. It'd be like that. You are friends, so sometimes they give you characters. Got a little bit fortunate here. The NEP autopilots into 5M. You just barely get over top of it with EX. And then the very, very tip of this cloud hits him. Okay, dash is through. Interesting, interesting. So, um, uh, you have you have a tag dependency, a tag dependency. Uh, I'm not sure if you know this already, but you, you definitely raw tag a little bit too much. Uh, and it's always interesting whenever I have to bring this up because like raw tag is an ex I, I believe that raw tag is the single best move in the game. Uh, if you're not counting if, if you're not counting sparking as a move, uh, then like raw tag is definitely it's it's broken as shit. However. There are good route tags and there are bad route tags. I'm sure, I'm sure you're aware of this. Uh, and what you don't want to do is you you don't want to rely you you don't want to build up a, a dependency. Uh, what I mean by that is a dynamic where if you cannot get a successful raw tag, you can never defend, right? And so uh, I kind of feel like that's where you're at right now. Is like if you do not get a good raw tag, it's really hard uh, for you to defend. I don't know if that's because of you don't want to defend or if you're just having trouble defending but either way it feels like if your opponent is able to answer raw tag effectively they will kind of just steamroll you uh, and you're also showing you're showing the intent to raw tag extremely early as well so and that and that's what i mean by this so some people right they'll they'll rotate through defensive options this is what you should be thinking about right so like when your opponent starts running their offense <clears throat> there's a lot of things that can be going through your mind and so some people uh hard commit to defensive options before the pressure even starts and i think that's kind of where you're at like you're hard committing to tag here before any type of like difficult pressure to deal with even happens so what i mean by that is so the skd happens right nep does literally just a safe jump you're already holding tag here right you're already holding tag and so that that tells me that you were you were bent on holding tag like pretty much no matter what happened uh, and that's a problem because you kind of when, when it comes to raw tagging you kind of want to look at what type of pressure your opponent is running and then choose tag afterwards because like what will happen a lot to you here is they'll safe jump and some people will just backdash you hit your ass some people will safe jump and they'll look at you holding x and they're like oh bet it's a fucking free s free s hit here and so like uh don't don't like hard commit in your mind before the pressure actually plays out right because <clears throat> if you look at if you look at your opponent's team structure what what is the come after is actually not all that scary like you can you can block this like, this will be fine as long as you can block kefla 6h and tech dragon rush right you'll be okay because this is vegeta c it's not even uh um <clears throat> it's not even like that much block stun uh especially if you crouch block it it's very low block stun and so like this is not the scariest thing in the world a mash reflect here okay you delay wake up but you miss your reflect ideally you want to delay wake up through most of it and then press reflect immediately then you will get out uh, most of the time kefla ray zone is very inconsistent nowadays yep challenges I 
The bad miss. Damn, you're gonna lose a character for that too. see more of I don't yeah you can call it you can call Janemba late here you don't have to call it sort of what causes that awkward situation good recognition okay. yeah so uh, in this whole like neutral, this, this whole extended neutral segment, um, you're moving too much with moves, and you're not moving enough with. <clears throat> so you're you're pressing a lot, um, you're pressing a lot in places that you don't really need to press in. Um, so like, uh, what I was talking about before is, you know, the emphasis on position, and not worrying about you know getting the hit immediately. So so what I mean by that is like, if you look at the game state. You hit your opponent in neutral, they're gonna die no matter what, right? So six bars, um, <clears throat> and her health is very low, and so like, you don't need to get the hit right this second, right? There's no this this such of uh, <clears throat> um, sorry, um, this this sense of urgency that you've kind of like fabricated, it, it shouldn't actually be there. Uh, it's not it's it's not a matter of like okay I need to get the hit right 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 the second because pretty much any hit is gonna kill him here and so like you can play patient right uh, we were talking about how like you you win the long range most of the time as long as you pay attention to the C assist and so uh, you can just kind of wait kind of wait play lame um, in, in certain situations even a vanish confirm would kill there so it's not uh it's not urgent your assist comes up much more like so like sitting back and relying on your assist is going to be much more reliable for you than your opponent because they're running a c assist so you're going to get two calls of your assist for every one of theirs mm -mm, roughly okay definitely showed you ex like a few times there so gonna go for it no this is not the christmas playlist Mm. Parking, I would just take the meat here. Okay, a little bit your bridge. Nep try to DP. Okay, you're gonna get jailed here. Lucky didn't confirm that. Hmm. Kinda let him get away with a lot here. Round start DP. Wow. Okay, and then he doesn't kill you. But doesn't press empty vanish. Oof. Nep, if you're watching, bro, like if you're gonna do that, you, you gotta press the press the give meter. No, you definitely did. You gotta press the empty. The whole point that we're going for DP there. Birthday situation. Um. Okay, are you gonna snap? All right. I mean, okay. Looks really awkward. I'm not dead though. Could just special tag.
be a little bit closer. But like, mm -mm. fat sauce stuff is like nice and all, but like mid screen especially, uh, sometimes it's better to just run up and safe jump with your character. So you don't always you don't you don't have to have to tunnel vision on the on the fat toss stuff. Sometimes it's just better to to do it with your your point character. Be much more consistent. You kind of lose all your pressure for the going for a fat toss stuff there. Your opponent texts so far away from you, it's like hard for you to follow up, even if you even if you like micro dash before. Nice, that was good. That's good on the uh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I did, but you didn't press a button here, so might have gotten that free hit if you did that pass and you didn't press anything. I don't know what you're looking for. A good to each given that situation there are some people that like to do like especially with vegeta who has good key blasts uh good diagonal key blasts they they'll like dash up and then id back to bait to h and then punish you with key blast With our turn here, okay. Right. Yeah, this this up command grab thing that you're doing is, uh, in my eyes, it's not that scary. It's because, of course, Vegito doesn't have a fast low. So like stuff like this, especially when their back is to corner, back to corner is like uh, pretty easy to block, especially when you factor. Uh, on that Janemba enables uh, guard cancel reflect property. So like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's something else that you could do instead. You also get force landing recovery. So like, um, in a situation where you do the up command grab thing. Right, so you go for this cross up, and you see how like Vegito like kind of squats. This right here, this is landing recovery, and so like, mm -mm. And, and and on top of that, right, you go for cross up here. Uh, even if they're in key blast block stun, and uh, it is if it is enough block stun. You go for a cross up there. They still get cross up protected if they don't. If they had not, if they have not pressed uh, reflect and it would jail you otherwise, then you're gonna you're gonna get cross up protected there. So feels a little inconsistent. Mm. No, it's They're alive though. Another tag. Had to mash. high I don't know what you got counter hit pressing there it's a bad press right so why is this a bad press well look look at look at everything that's going on here oh you're not running a DP assist so you can't like just this and get out for free and like he's just shushing you right he, he didn't shushing you here because there's a small gap but um obviously whenever he has an assist he's just gonna try to run conventional pressure pressing there is not not the highest percent sometimes you'll do it and it'll work but 
Um, you know, confirmation bias is a killer. Grab it again. Using a special move in neutral there when you don't need to. <clears throat> Papu is tied for the fastest key blast in the game. Definitely a tool you need to abuse more. Try to make it again. Okay. But your defense, your defense is not holding up very much. Nice. Yeah, I don't I don't like this uh I don't like the sequencing you're doing. Where you're you're doing empty vanish plus assist, but you're not pressuring your opponent. So like if you're gonna if you're gonna go for for a sparking scramble here, you need to actually do the staircase. <clears throat> uh, and there's no real reason for you not to do the staircase. You're letting you're you're pressing that sparking, you're empty vanishing, you're getting nothing. <clears throat> so you're spending three resources in one. You're spending sparking spending a meter and you're spending an assist all for nothing right? and that that type of trade-off like is very difficult to win games when when that is the dynamic established Interesting that you still called Janemba there. Might have been like autopilot or something. I mean, you hit him with the EX leg, so you didn't have to call any assist there anymore. Tiger 5H. Drops. Punish. Yep. I don't. I don't understand. I don't understand this option because um, even if you hit him, you get nothing, right? Because you committed to this these legs pretty early, and so you would have dropped it even if this two H would have made contact. EX list minus five. But even if they were unsafe, wait until the end of the legs to call assist there. Wouldn't call it in the middle of the leg. Uh, it's not really a safe option. Uh, it's another option you can do, but of course that loses to your opponent pressing super down. You're gonna hit by a lot of EX kick. This is like... This is a really, this is a really good EX kick from now. You waited until you were landing from double jump, likely landed, and then tried to jump again. So that's why this hits you. What? That's a free punish as well. Both 2H and, uh... Both 2H and Reflect work. Wow! I'm a Dougie with the raid. Thank you, bro. Yeah, so... Um... Overall sentiment from this set is too many moves, not enough movement. 
I appreciate you, man. And so, like, um, you're you're focusing on the hit too much. Focus on getting in the hit. Focus on, especially with a team like yours, you need to focus on position. Mm -mm. You need to focus on being in parts of the screen that is very hard for your opponent to reach without hard committing. Mm -mm. And kind of stalling and, and making, not stalling, but uh, making making the approach from your opponent as slow or as difficult as possible. And so you need to be relying more on like that Buki Blast. Mm -mm. Um, he has also has like a pretty good ID back JH. It goes pretty far, right? Uh, so there's a lot of different things that you can do to kind of kind of lame out, right? And you're playing you're playing the assist to play lame as well. You're playing Vegito and you're playing Janemba, double key blast assist. And so like your team's pressure in general is going to be uh, kind of sacrificed, uh, not fully sacrificed, but it's going to be harder for you to get really really good consistent pressure because like pretty much every single time you're gonna um, you're gonna RPS because key blast properties. And so. Mm -mm. What is le what is much more consistent is calling assist defensively uh, and punishing overextensions from your opponent. And that's what your team should be able to do very well. Uh, so the transition for your team should be playing really lame in the neutral. Your opponent chooses an option. They might run into a key blast assist. And if that happens, then, you know, you're playing Majin Buu so you can transition into mix-ups from there. <clears throat> but you have to be willing to play lame uh, because your team is going to lose the mid-range to a lot of other teams, especially teams that are being played in meta right now. Uh, the game is determined very heavily uh, in the mid range right now. All pretty much all the characters that are top tier have extremely strong mid range. Uh, if you think about it, you know Gogeta, Jito, right? Characters have very strong mid range. Base Goku, B Broly, right? All of them have strong mid range. Uh, the only character in meta right now that doesn't have like the best mid range is like Base Vegeta, I guess. But like, uh, even he can e even he can get some shit done. Uh, if they're willing to play a little bit uh but like i said so so your team is kind of lacking in the mid-range department uh in terms of like how it interacts with the meta and so you should focus on not playing the mid-range which is possible but don't try to play the mid-range uh, against these teams that that thrive in it his team definitely definitely blue goku uh blue goku kefla shells are are like mid-range like they're very very mid-range Especially because in this situation, it's not even like Nep was really using his long range either. He wasn't really rapid keep uh, very much like that. Uh, he wasn't even like EX tackling the skip neutral all that much either. And so like, um, you're not de you're, you're not, you're not, uh, you should not be discouraged uh, from pressing these long range tools, uh, at least just to see how your opponent responds. <clears throat> you don't necessarily need to get the hit with them, but seeing what your opponent does in response to these options is often more powerful than getting the hit outright because if i if i go for key blast and i see that the moment i start key blasting my opponent likes to choose an option like super dash or a projectile and vulnerability well now the things that i can do open up uh, like in a big way because <clears throat> if i know my opponent's going to commit early then that means like shooting one key blast and just waiting for my opponent to commit becomes much stronger i'm gonna get really hard punishes all the stuff like that so i think you should think about that uh, and the defense thing that we, that we were talking about. Um, need to need to learn how to, to better defend. You need better like conventional defense. Uh, and thankfully, right, when it comes to def conventional defense, like just can you block the very, very common things that are in this game? What are the very, very common things in this game? Them, right? IEDs, uh, teching Dragon Rush, right? Those are very common. That can be practiced uh, with defense bots. So that's something that can be grinded. Um, obviously, every team is going to have specific mix-up options that you're going to have to be ready for, you know, in the heat of the moment. Mm -mm. But I don't think that's the problem that you're having, right? Uh, because he didn't really have to go to the character-specific stuff all that much because pretty much every jump in or every defensive situation, you're holding tag, uh, meaning that you just never want to block ever. Uh, and that's a problem. And so you should get more comfortable playing defense against the common stuff. Uh, and then, you know, whenever you use that in conjunction with your defensive mechanics, that's when defense becomes good. But until then, uh, it feels like you're relying way too much on route tag uh, and you're going to get hard punished against people for it. Like, definitely, definitely get out. Uh, less buttons in the mid range, like I said. But when it, when it comes to playing neutral, right, honestly, honestly, quality matters so much more 
than quantity. Right? A lot of people think it's quantity and they're just gonna press button, press button, press button, and eventually one of these buttons is gonna land. Some people like to play that way, right? But I'm telling you what's much more effective is waiting until you're in the perfect spot to press that button and then you press it. You're gonna get much more, uh, many more hits in that way. You're gonna get punished in neutral way less as well because you're not just throwing out shit, hoping for something to stick. Mm -mm. And so I would focus on those aspects uh, and, and you know, you clean up from there. Moving on. Mm -mm. What's up? Oh, what's up, I do? How you been? I think your uptech habit gets a little exposed to set, but we'll see. So you have two really bad defensive habits. Well, you have more than that, honestly, but uh, two, two that, that are extremely relevant uh, against an overwhelming majority of opponents. One is like you almost always uptech every single time. Uh, and another thing is like when you, when you're like in these situations, like you press backdash. I don't know. I don't really know who ingrained this in your mind, but like, um, th some of these situations are really inconsistent or something like backdash, like, uh, like you tech and then you mat you press backdash immediately. Like, and look how close, look how close he is. So, so like, as you, as you go higher up, uh, in the level of the game, players are really strong at, uh, positioning. Um, and what I mean by that is like, when I, when I knock someone down, like, when I knock someone down, you'll notice that I'm almost, I'm almost always uh, doing some type of micro dash or, or something. And that's because like when you run your pressure in this game, you kind of have to constantly adjust because there's so many defensive mechanics that mm -mm, if you're not close enough to your opponent, right? If you're not close enough to your opponent uh, to where like you can get a proper meaty, there's a lot of ways it can go wrong. And so like you'll notice like Nitro hits you and then immediately after he hits you, he dashes forward. And that's because he knows he needs to be close enough uh, in order to to actually play this situation afterwards, if he wants to maintain pressure, mm -mm. and so like things like doing this tech and then backdash, you're gonna get smoked. You're gonna get smoked. Uh, yeah, no, two M. Like even if he if he did micro dash forward and then two M to me to you, you just die. Like straight up died. And like yeah, and so like stuff like that uh, is is still a commitment. So so the, uh, a lot of problems, uh, a lot of the issues that that players have is that they think. If they're if they're pressing a defensive options and it, it, if they're pressing a defensive option it means that it's not a commitment that's not true right it, it's not true anything that you do in this game even defensively is a commitment right it just so happens that defensive options are usually stronger than offensive options in this game but it is still a commitment and so like if you want to press backdash you can press the backdash if you want but just know that you're gonna die a lot because not only can can they do this micro adjustment thing that I'm talking about, right? People are also really good at calling their assist to me to you. So like, what if he was playing a pseudo beam and he knocked you down and just called the, the assist me to you, right? You backdash right into that and get full combo. There's a lot of ways it can go wrong, right? And so I want you to be really mindful of that. This is pretty fucking crazy, actually. This should not have happened. <clears throat> so this is soft knockdown. Uh, what you want to do here instead is actually delay wake up and the reason that you want to delay wake up is because of momentum so uh, when when you do <clears throat> When you do uh, j2h into jh, right? <clears throat> Your character's momentum is still 
uh, going off of their J2H. And so, like, he's flying really far forward and upward. And so, if you delay wake up, what's going to happen is he's going to fly over you. Like, he will fly over you into the corner. I don't know why my fucking whiteboard did. Uh, he will fly over you and in, into the corner. And so, like, while you still can get muted, right? He has no assist available here. And he's going to put himself in the corner, which is a much better situation for you to be in than, um, you know, betting on, on a conventional, like, soft knock. <clears throat> This is pretty crazy how this played out, honestly. Like you tech and then you backdashed again. And he presses 5M and jails you to the ground. And okay, and this this situation is really bad. Like this, this is a situation that, that is actually worse than it seems. And and the reason is that first of all, it's Kid Boo, who's really good at stealing a bunch of turns and making it really difficult for his opponent to find gaps and get out of pressure. But not only that. But since you chose, you were actionable, right? You you teched and then you backdash and then you got jailed to the ground. And since that's the case, you can see his assists are cooling down here. And so like, now there's like the sense of urgency, like, oh God, I need to do something before these assists come off cooldown or else I'm just gonna eat two 50-50s potentially. And so you gonna be really careful about choosing options. Like another uh, another thing about, you know, pressing backdash um, in, in situations like this, because you don't always have somewhere to go. You backdash yourself into the corner, then where do you have to go from there? I have anywhere to go. <clears throat> oh god, yeah, I forgot. Twitch's player is fucking girl. I wish their video player was better, man. It's so annoying. Okay. Take a chance on super dash there. There's a lot of ways you can die for that. So you understand the risk associated with that. Assists are coming off cooldown. Okay, choose reflect before then. This is really bad. Nice tech though. Okay, fake assist call. Mm-mm. <clears throat> Pretty sure he dies, right? Mm-mm. <clears throat> mm -mm. Overextension. Yeah. This is your autopilot. Uh, coming into play here. Mm -mm. Like, oh, I have babies, so it's a free neutral win rate. But he reflects it appropriately. You don't anti-reflect properly either. And then you overcommit on your string. You just whip a 5H. Actually get happy birthday as well, because you try to match your assist to get to safety. Bad, it's bad news, it's bad news. That's what's up. Like my parsec was having. That's a good place for it to fuck up though. So much damage taken on this. So you pretty much have to spark here. Very greedy for you not to. Yep. So you're so you're so worried about <clears throat> uh two H that you forget that there's actually faster options that your opponent can. And so like, what can you do instead? Isn't JS supposed to medium? Not with every character, right? It medies their 2H. If he matches 2H, then yes, you'll get the hit here. But he didn't press 2H, he pressed 5L, uh, which is seven frames. So this is a different, different subset of things. And this is what I mean by like, these are the things that you need to be labbing. What does my opponent do post spark? What what can I what can I medium? What can I not be? Mm -mm. Backdash after the vanish. He can. Could have done empty vanish, backdash assist would have been probably better, but okay. Check. This is high up. Okay, chose the backdash. Hmm. Wow, that was. I'm pretty sure he whack dashed. They don't have fraud. I hate Twitch. Same advance. Yeah, no, he he whack dash there. Actually, would have been able to to block. Smashing that back dash. Ah, finger double jump here. And she did. Yep, 
early double jump spent. See? What do you do here? Not really a lot, especially because like he's so close to you that he could actually just dash underneath you as well. So like even you doing slam would not do anything. <clears throat> you're you're pretty much hosed here when you spend double jump in this situation. You try to pressure assist to get you out of the situation, but nothing's guaranteed. He can always check you with two H pretty much. And he just waited for you to land and then dr. Double jumps are our life. Goku drunk driving. Yeah. You're gonna solo guard cancel here soon. Oh no, you better not reflect. That's painful. Oh, he dropped it though. Okay. Like, all right, bro. I'm gonna give you a chance to win. That's what's up. Why are you summoning in his face? Why? What is this? You're crazy. You're actually a psychopath. Okay, so let's actually talk about what's what's going on here. So what what's happening <clears throat> and why you're having such a hard time is because Nitro is playing your dead zone. <clears throat> so there are places on the screen that it, so any given character at any given time has places on the screen that they can cover at certain times right and then there's places that they cannot cover or if they do try to cover it will take them uh, a really long time i.e using a system mechanic or something so what nitro is doing is he's staying grounded he, you can see he's committing to the ground movement here um <clears throat> because he knows he needs to be able to reflect Right, he ne he needs to be able to reflect just in case he has to deal with like your key blast nonsense, uh, or whatever. So he's committed to to staying grounded here, just taking space from you all on the ground. Meanwhile, you are going into the air a lot, right? And while you're in the air, right, you can see when you take off, he's moving forward. <clears throat> and the reason is because there's a dead zone underneath baby, and so there is a spot that you just kind of can't cover. And so he's continually focusing, right? You can see him move forward here as well, right? He's con he's focusing on getting into your dead zone, which is like kind of directly under. <clears throat> and this is uh this is a very important aspect of neutral playing your opponent's dead zone. <clears throat> Alternatively, right, because baby's key blast kind of go like this, right? He could play up here as well. Uh and there's not but there's pretty much nothing that you could do. Uh, to hit him here if he if he played airborne, but he chose to play grounded uh, because you're spending double jumps so early <clears throat> And that's the reason that this gets enabled is because you're committing to early double jumps And so every time that you spend that double jump He knows that he can move forward without worrying very much because even if you decide to do something crazy like press EX or something It's just gonna go over his head, right? And that's what I mean by dead zone. There's a dead zone here. See this triangle, right? He blasts jump height Right, he's maneuvering in here. There's nothing that you can do to make unless you commit to a super dash uh, if you want to. But super dash after double jump, of course, is pretty fucking terrible. So he's just doing that, and that's why you're having such a hard time. Yeah. Hmm. You actually could have blocked. Yeah. yeah, could have blocked. Game. Oh, right. Yeah, no, he dropped the super, right? <laughs> How the fuck did he drop this? Yeah, it's too high. I think I said that on commentary too when it happened. Hit him there too on a stagger to overcommit with five LL. Yeah, I see. 
All right, let's see what happens game two. Game two, it was probably harder for you. Hmm? Making you real uncomfortable indeed. Heck again. You have to spark. You see how like upticking like royally fucks your resource economy? Like you It's like it it's literally like it's like a domino effect, right? Uh is how is how I would describe it. <clears throat> so you get reflect baited. He SKDs you in the corner. You choose to uptick. He doesn't combo you, right? But he hits you here. And the moment that he hits you here, you're panicking. You're like, oh shit. It is not it is not working out. So he hits you and you tech. You up tech, right? Again. And so now you're jailed. You just have to you you essentially just have to take whatever here. Uh, unless you spark. You just you have to hold it. Whereas like if you had chosen a different tech option, you'd have had more options available to you. But now that you up tech, you're like, oh, okay, well like it's either take take my mix-up or spark. And like you do choose the spark there, but it has severe impact for the rest of the game. <clears throat> and that was that was all off of one hit on a committed reflect that you didn't necessarily have to commit to either. So he sparks back. What are we gonna do here? The assist available for him. This super dash was not good. This <laughs> this this super dash you will die for a lot. That is the essential double jump super dash over top of the assist. I just really don't lock down, right? You'll die a lot for that. Chose the, the safer route, didn't press 2H, but he's gonna get a turn here pretty much no matter what. Is you even try to overextend. So, so like, right? Mm -mm, because you burn your double jump before. Uh -um, right, because you air dash forward, meaning that you don't have a double jump. Then you super dash, that means you don't have a jump afterwards. And so, uh, this is what enables a lot of people to press buttons on defense post super dash block. So, if he wanted to press 2M here, you die. You actually just die, right? If he press 2M, because he knows that you don't have a double jump and he knows that your JL is not going to make contact with him. You don't have a button that'll actually make contact after a uh, block super dash without double jump. Like, you just don't. You don't have a button that'll make contact. the best that the, the only thing that you could do is like ground pound, but like you're not pressing ground pound, right? And so you press JL. It's not going to make contact. If he presses 2M, you actually die, which is pretty unfortunate, but you shouldn't be pressing shit like this in the first place, especially after double. And that is why it's important. If you're going to choose an option like this, you need to save your double jump for the situation afterwards. Having the double jump after it changes fundamentally what happens here. Press the super dash, right? And then afterwards, you're able to jump back and create more space if you need. Because you overextend, this is literally an overextend. Um, this is a really horrible situation to be in. You didn't get hard punished for it this time, but you will in the future. <clears throat> you're also wiggling a lot on defense, which is pretty common for you, but... Uh, you're getting hit by a lot of just like standard 5LL staggers instead of like this is pre-sparked forbidden starter. He hadn't even really started his pressure yet. You're already, I don't know. That's just I, a hit that you can't can't give to people. He could have fucking bombed you there too, but take it. Mm -mm. Playlist is oh no. Good. At least me. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Yep, that five LL is destroying you right now. Uh, he did, he, rather, he did four LL here. You're, you're, you're hard guessing. You're, you're straight up just guessing every time. Every time he jabs your block, you're guessing immediately already. Uh, you're, you're committing to jumps. You're pressing buttons on defense. After your uh, offline sets is sweet, can you send in the VOD if you? Oh, of course, bro. Your subs. Yeah. Okay, so this situation works out for you, but I'm gonna tell you that like against this character in particular, this is really dangerous. <laughs> um, and that should be immediately apparent because of how much 
how many different invulnerability thank you for the follow how many different invul uh, invulnerabilities ui has so especially because you don't have an assist to cover yourself um so be really careful because this is this is also another overextension but he just played really timid um and so like he didn't press anything but there's a lot of uis that will just press two on 4h there and they kill your character right and uh, and like so the the reason the reason that this is so dangerous right is because of your health and so like um even even him pressing in in vulnerability here will kill you whether it's level one counter two on four h right any of those will kill you and that's a very dangerous dynamic for you to run pressure on right because people are going to realize that well i can press an invulnerable move and if it hits him he dies right um they're much more incentivized to go for things like that whenever this is this is this is the health you know, that your character has i want to pay attention to that as well you can use it to your advantage actually like there are a lot of times where i use that to to my to, to my advantage I'll, I'll start a block string i'll be like hmm i i my character actually dies for dp here so i'm gonna hard bait DP. <clears throat> because my opponent might be enticed to go for it in that situation Let's talk about this i know you were you were really excited the, the funny thing is like how, how things go full circle <laughs> and what i mean by that is when i first met you um <clears throat> when i first met, met you you used to always do this oki and then after after some talking i told you about how this oki is, is super super inconsistent then you stopped doing it for a while and then you quote unquote found a way to make it good and so what i'm telling you here now is that like you still are gonna run into this issue you're, you're gonna run into this issue and i've watched you play in clouds and the people that recognize that what you're doing here is not actually all that safe are checking you for it you're you're losing characters for it. so what he does here is delay wake up right you're still in recovery from legs here right still recovering because that's just how the move works so very slight delay wake up see like your button doesn't start until afterwards he had already been pressing he already pressed his button so like nitro nitro does this a lot actually like <laughs> he does very he does very slight delay wake up to fuck up timings like this and so like it's not a matter of um it, it, it's not necessarily a matter of um <clears throat> of like you pressed and you got counter hit for it that did happen but like what really happened here is he chose a really good delay wake up especially when you have no assist available Right? So you have no contingency plan. You have no contingency plan anymore because you don't have any assist. Go for M leg solo, which is very greedy. He delay wake ups very slightly and he gets his turn back at the very least. And the turn here, right, is more important than actually getting the hit. It's nice for him that you pressed and you gave him the character. But even if you did not, right, you get 50 50 anyway, right? It's not like he had to get the hit on, on your Oki. What could have happened is. You blocked, and even if you block, you're taking a 50-50 anyway, because it's fucking kid boo. And so, um, that is why, like, Oki like this, especially unassisted, is, like, very, very inconsistent. Especially, 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 right? Against characters that have frame 1 invulnerability. Kid boo does have frame 1 air invulnerability. So if he does not delay wake up and you do M legs, you get grabbed. <laughs> or you get LDP'd by Vegeta, right? And I've seen Hector do that. And so you want to be really careful. Be really, really careful, especially unassisted. What I really have a problem with is you going for this unassisted. Uh, but I think that sometimes you tunnel vision on M leg Oki, right? Tunnel vision on M leg. Sometimes the best Oki is the simplest Oki. And what's the simplest Oki in this situation? You knock him down, back dash, you hold up forward, JH. What happens if he delay wake ups, right? You can back dash OS input backdash while you press jh if you delay wake ups you won't make contact you'll backdash and be safe <clears throat> if he presses a button if someone mashes on you on wake up they get counter hit if they press reflect your character will land and you're able to answer to reflect tag uh, or reflect button or pretty much whatever 
And so, like, sometimes simple is just don't tunnel vision on this. My god, my character has a super specific OK option that I can go for. Not even that good in this situation. But in reality, just take the universal shit. Sometimes it's just better to do the universals. Uh, and, and especially in this situation. The late wake up is a fucking hassle to deal with. But you're making it harder on yourself by by going for, for Oki. Like, <clears throat> If you have assist, then it's different. If, if you have assist, then like you can afford. So so the problem, the pro, the real problem, right, is if, even if you have assists, right, unless you pre-call your assist to meet them explicitly. So in no situation can you go for M leg Oki and not be checked by frame one invulnerability. The only time that will not happen is if you pre-call your assist to do the meaty for you and you're doing legs after that, right? So your assist has to be the one to make contact first. Uh, and the problem with your, your team is that Esperly is a dead zone and Baby is airborne. And so like if they have some type of, if, if it's a DP, right? If it's an LDP, for example, you can't even call Baby Meaty. He will get hit as well if you go for, for this Oki. And this is shit like you want to pay attention to. <clears throat> and so like they can check you. They can check you even if you have assist. And that's why I'm saying like it is, uh, it definitely matters like what character you're going. You, you kind of you, you don't want to autopilot. It, that's what's kind of happening. You're autopiloting. You're getting fucking smoked for it. Um. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, you tend to. Um. <clears throat> Hold on. Let me let me see if I can make this a two part. Yeah. Okay. You just committed to fuzzy jump. I was saying like, um, <clears throat> like there it's like it, this is really easy to defend for him, right? Because the moment you go into M's, he knows. Uh, the only thing you can do is H S or grab, right? You could ground pound if you wanted to, but like, really gonna do that solo when you don't have safe vanish? Um, probably not. So he knows that. So he's just pretty much looking for you to to reset into grab or something. Like that's so a pretty easy fuzzy jump for him, and that's. Yeah, <laughs> holy fuck, man. Yeah, he he kind of kind of smokes you here because you uptick again. By the way, other uptick. Okay. Double jump spent immediately, and I guarantee you try to fall with a button. Yep. 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 The bad habit you have. Not dead though. Oh, you got mixed. Yeah, yeah. So like the funny thing about Dragon Ball Fighters is that a lot of people feel like, um, you know, man, I can't make one mistake or else I, I fucking lose. It's so funny how far from the truth it is. Most of the time, like when you eat, when you get hit like that in those situations, it's a combination of like three to four bad decisions, <laughs> all in tandem to lead to you getting hit. It's just so funny how people perceive this game. Oh, you like 5H or something. Okay. Look how much backdash. You, you just backdash so much. It's crazy, bro. Crazy. This is interesting because the the call to assist I think ate the ate the key blast. That's not that's not an interaction that happens all that often. Pretty funny though.
God damn. This this is so good for him. <laughs> this, this, this is like Right. This, this is the concept of, of simplicity that, that, that I've been talking about. A lot of characters have like a lot of shit that they can press at like any given time. Oh like sometimes the best thing to do is just keep it simple. That's what he does here. He blocks your key blast. He's like, okay, you commit to that the acid rain, so he's like, alright, it's my turn. You backdash, so you're airborne, so that means like all this space is to be taken. Um <clears throat> and so he knows if he forces you to block that he doesn't have to worry about any type of key blast coming back anyway. So that's what he does. He just walks forward and he's like, alright, bet, it's my turn. And now, right? In this set, anytime he's pressed 5L on your block, you just guessed immediately. And so, the likelihood of him getting the hit in this situation is pretty high. I don't think he does this time around, but... Oh, no, you, you should commit to Guard Cancel Vanish. Which, he could have punished, actually. But no one's ever ready for this shit yet, because we're not used to playing against it. But you actually died there. He, that is a 2H in, in death scenario. Mm -hmm. Yep. I smoked. I smoked. Okay. So, what what led to this set turning out the way that it that it did? First of all, jump resources, right? Some some players that you play against uh, in the clouds are like okay at, at certain things, right? But. What most people are really bad at at punishing people for, for spending double jump. Uh, and I think that makes a huge difference. That. Nitro is really good at the moment you spend that double jump is chokes he focuses on cutting the screen for you. So you don't have time to maneuver. And this is an extreme problem for you, because you like to press backdash a lot. So like if you double jump and he moves forward and cuts the screen in half, you have nowhere to backdash anymore. You have nowhere to go. And so this snowballs. What happens is you choose, you choose a committal option. He cuts off the screen as a result. Now you have no space, and so you feel pressured. And that's when you start making really bad decisions. That's when we start seeing even earlier double jump spent. So when you start mashing on defense, right? It all just compounds. <clears throat> Your up tech habit has got to stop. You up tech probably 95% of the time. This is a really big issue. Right. This is a really big issue. And the reason that you do this is because on net play, people are really bad at meeting up tech. And so a lot of the time you can just get your turn back. But that's not going to happen against really strong players. What's going to happen instead is you're going to up tech and you're going to be jailed to the ground into a 50-50 in a situation that you didn't have to be because you could have just cho chose a grounded tech and had access to reflect in your defensive options. But no, you chose the up tech to try to be greedy and get your turn back. Now you get jailed into 50-50. You get, you get forced to spend spark on literally the first knockdown every single time. This is really bad, right? So, you gotta mix up your techs. Nothing in fighting games is good if you do it every time. Not a single thing. There's literally not a single thing in fighting games that's good if you do it every single time. Up tech is destroying you right now. Like, you, you gotta stop. Not stop, but like, yeah, you, you gotta find a healthy percentage of mixing up tech options. There's so many tech options, right? <clears throat> but you're only using like one. <laughs> it's like up tech or every now and every now and then you'll back tech. You. So that's a problem. Another thing is um, you you are you're you're playing very fearful on on defense uh, and and so <clears throat> when I talk about people well when when I talk to people about you know mashing on defense, a lot of people believe that when I say that you shouldn't be fearful on defense means that oh I should just you know press a bunch of buttons more. That's actually not what I'm saying. Um, what I'm saying is that. <clears throat> do not fear your opponent on defense to the point where you're so afraid to block anything that you're giving your opponent hits that that they didn't even earn right so if my opponent has a team that has a 50 50 right they still have to do the 50 50 right and they have to execute and so there are plenty of situations in this game that people have 50 50s or the but they fuck up the setup or they miss time something and there's a gap that there wasn't wasn't there and you know originally right and so like if you're so afraid of ever blocking anything that you're pressing buttons before the 50 50 even goes off right a lot of the time what is going to happen is you're just going to get hit before the assist comes out and you're going to give them a free combo and a knockdown and they're going to have their assist for the for the mix-up afterwards right which is even worse than the situation that you got put in uh 
like originally and so like after 5l pretty much every time you're choosing something yeah after every time you press 5l you, you were choosing jump or press button and so like you're just getting hit you're just getting hit and 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 you know fit, getting 50 50 it might feel really bad right but keep in mind that it is a 50 50 you have a 50 percent chance of being correct and blocking your way out of the situation <clears throat> as opposed to giving him the free hit <laughs> you gave him you gave him so many free hits because you're so afraid of the you know you're fr you're so afraid of like getting command grab or taking a 50 50 that you're wiggling and the wiggling is getting you killed because you're eating forbidden starters you're eating m starters it, it's just really bad right <clears throat> you can't you, you can't be fearful on defense and how do we combat being fearful on defense is knowing what we need to use when right there's 80 million things to do on defense but only after you understand what all options you have available to you does it become defense favored right <clears throat> And so like it's not as simple as block or press buttons it's not that simple right a lot of things a lot of things you can do especially because they added gc vanish gc vanish actually changes quite a lot in this game uh but you know a lot of people are not used to using it myself included i'm not used to using that mechanic uh, quite yet but it is quite strong because like on on situations where <clears throat> situations where your opponent has a block string 50 50 right you press gc vanish and yes there are situations where they run the kid boo mix up and they can still 2h you but the problem is that people are so not used to dealing with this mechanic that often they just block the gc vanish they don't actually punish it <clears throat> that actually happened i think twice in this set where you went for gc vanish uh, and he just blocked because he like wasn't familiar with the situation because it's still a new mechanic uh in the grand scheme of things so it's, it's hard for people to have you know all the contingencies for that because they're just not used to playing around it and so <clears throat> Don't be so afraid that that you're 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 giving him hits on top of hits on top of hits on top you need to make your opponent earn their hit right at the end of the day oh what that looks like is going to change depending on the situation but what you don't want to do is create a situation where wow i'm just holding up anytime my opponent puts me in a block string so i'm just going to give him a free hit and then on the knockdown i'm going to have to deal with the same thing i was going to try to avoid in the first place right you get hit before the kid boo assist comes out you eat 50 percent of your health and then you have to take the kid boo mix up because he still has the assist available and so like that's a really unhealthy defensive dynamic for you to establish and i think it's part of the reason that this set uh went really bad for you mm -mm. but mainly you're spending air resources extremely early you're too you're you're too um <clears throat> you're too buttony uh and, and what i mean by that is like i, I think it really shows itself um when when you play baby when you play baby you like always feel like you have to be pressing something and it's getting you killed a lot because you're you're committing and 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 then the moment that your opponent has good movement and they're able to wiggle into one of your dead zones it's really bad for you and and, and that causes panic and that causes scrambles that are not in your favor at all and so like you need to to realize that sometimes just moving is better than pressing something um <clears throat> And and like, <clears throat> there there's there there's so many situations where where like, you could have just done nothing and just moved forward on your opponent. <clears throat> you could have just moved forward against your opponent to take space from them if that's what you want to do. Just because your baby and your your you know baby is like very key blast based and shit, does not mean you can't restrict your opponent's space and and move in on them, right? There, it's not like designated like. Oh, I have to play lame and he has to play aggressive. It's not actually that way. And so like sometimes you want to find you, you want to switch it up on your opponent. Sometimes you want to play aggressive. Sometimes you want to play lame. But what you don't want to do is always commit, always commit, always commit. The person that usually wins in Dragon Ball Fighters in the neutral is the person that commits less. <laughs> there because there's a lot of things you can do in this game without committing. And it's because the super jump is in the game and you can let it this play for you. There's just a lot of stuff that goes into it. And so I think that's a big problem. Another big problem is <clears throat> you're uh you're you're too um it's too your 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 game plan with um with with like the mid range is like just too uh, too inconsistent I would say um and a lot of the time in the mid range you're 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 mashing like like actually mashing um <clears throat> and so like sometimes that'll work. Right? And I'm sure you've down tech mash on 
someone before and it, <laughs> you're like, yeah, dude, this feels great. But but the problem is that like <clears throat> Nitro is playing a team that is extremely strong in the mid range as well, right? And and like I said, the meta teams that are being played right now are usually excel in the mid range. It's the most important range in the game right now. <clears throat> and so like scrambling scrambling like uh certain characters is just way more dangerous like way more like ui ui is a very very scary character to scramble with that should be immediately apparent right not only does he have great buttons he has tons of invulnerability he has tons of tricks as well and so it's very hard to scramble with this character kid boo very hard to scramble with very difficult to scramble with kid boo he has hit scan normals right he has fucking boo ball to for quick diagonals he has fast cross up there's just a lot of things right <clears throat> and so like sometimes you need to recognize what you're up against uh and kind of make some adjustments to your gameplay based on that <clears throat> you kind of it, it's a combination of characters and and your opponent right if i'm playing against an opponent that loves to scramble then i'm going to do everything in my power to not scramble with them why because you don't want to play your opponent's game right that's the number that's the number one ticket to losing is playing your opponent's game if i go into a game and my opponent likes to play crazy and likes to scramble a bunch what incentive do i have to scramble with them some people in response to opponents play styles that are jarring will choose to uh kind of stoop to their level and they'll be like oh you're gonna go crazy i'm gonna go crazy with you right and they kind of get dragged into the into the vortex but i'm saying that's a horrible idea because your opponent is likely used to playing that way and you probably aren't and so you playing on their terms is exactly what they want they're kind of making you conform to their will in the game and so when you go into games you want to constantly be making adjustments think about how your opponent is playing and think about what adjustments you can make and sometimes you'll be wrong sometimes you 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 try to make an adjustment and it turns out what you thought would work did not work that that's gonna happen that's kind of fighting games that's how that works but if you're not actively thinking about these things it's very hard to win it's very hard to beat people that are stronger than you because they are better at establishing a game flow and making their opponent feel like they have to conform to their game. And so that's something you need to think about. That's what happened a lot in this set is that there's a pace that Nitro is trying to play at and he is forcing you to play at his pace. You are not comfortable playing at that pace and so you fall behind and it feels like every option that you choose is just a little bit too late, right? And that's because he's used to playing that way and you are not. That's, that's what I have. A lot of work to do. But keep practicing. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, I got one more for today. Yeah, this is from Anders. Uh, this looks like Anders in space. Hmm. Paste. Oh, I dropped it there. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Oh no, Anders, bro. You did you did the hard part, but you didn't do the easy part. You you baited him by string stopping. And then you just didn't press the M button to punish him. Tagged instead. A big hit left on the table. assist here so you, yeah there, there's merit to not sparking here just because he has no assist you don't like have to mm -mm, i would say but it is safer a little bit too active there okay 
got a little bit lucky. <laughs> He's dropping a lot of combos right now. Let's see what your Oki looks like. You have hit assist available. Okay. Somehow that worked out. I don't know how he didn't choose anything there. He even had sparking to disengage. He just held it. like the, the way you're running your offense delay wake up might be a, a problem for you but i don't know if he ever chooses it this set or not let's see okay, shot actually died but he didn't kill you that opened up low so, mm -mm. this in particular is a very reactable situation. When it's solo T N and he does Chaozu, you can almost always react and reflect. You delay wake up, uh, you delay wake up through it this time around, but you forgot that the point character is still can still do some things. <laughs> so, still got to worry about that. Want to keep your eyes on the point character. A little bit slow on that punish. Plus rings. What's up? Uh, I don't like this. I don't like this. So you go, you go for beam cross up, and you spend the meter to vanish. But then, like, you just let him fall because you're trying to go for soft knockdown shenanigans. There's a lot of ways to skip, especially because he has sparking. And so, like, just take the SKD. Just do the combo and take the sliding knockdown. It's just better. Especially because your assist is cooling down. You get like so if you do the entire combo, you give your assist time to recover. And so you likely have it for the knockdown situation afterwards, which is important. Oops. Pretty funny. Base is refusing to press sparking. Dice, something. Yeah. Well, I wonder what you chose here. Hard to see because the, the way the camera is. Hey, you got counter hit doing something. I don't know what it was though. Wow. Okay. It's really messy game one. Really, really messy. What do you have things clean up later? Let's see. See what adjustments we make. Hit on the hit confirm. Wow. Had a backdash, got hit for it. Park. Is a little bit fast. So it's a little bit quick on this. So, um, it was actually actually okay, but greedy to go for two M. 
Gre greedy to go for two. Level three. Yep. Okay. Well, ah, yeah, you see, you hard committed. Uh, you, generally, when your opponent's in sparking, you want to avoid hard committing just because a lot of ways uh, that things can be mitigated through sparking mechanics, brokenness. Drop the fuck. Take a chance to get out. Yeah, pretty obvious tag. Uh, Space tried to jab it, but Ian's jab is not the greatest for it. Up low. You're having trouble blocking your dome, friend. Frame for hmm, going for HL is quite crazy. By a ton of overheads, this game. you might be uh, when, when you're when you're trying to run like your your normal defense, you might be switching block too early. So like naturally, um, like our inclination is to to block low, like that. That's just how it works. And so like some people, whenever they need to block overheads, they switch to low block too fast. That might be what's for you. I don't know how that worked. But... I see. <laughs> e two H two. He just did it too late. Times you should have level three, dude. I don't know.
<laughs> That's not one that you see very often. You're gonna die for that too? You wiggle? Uh, maybe try to jump. <laughs> Pretty funny. Kind of went into your waiting arms here. You don't get a knock down here anymore, so. Like he has a bit of a trouble fighting it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, <laughs> he looks very uncomfortable defending hit right now. Wait, oh. No, live. Oh. No. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> oh, just yeah, another overhead just How do you drop that? Okay. Rumble time. Okay. Yeah, so... Mm -mm. So one of the issues that I noticed that you had throughout the set was... Um, so... <clears throat> It goes hand in hand with uh, the resource management thing that I'm always talking about, right? Uh, uh. But this is more of uh, when you spend your when you spend your resource, right? So you need to you need to recognize that like when you go into game, right? Your shells are actually um, um, your shells are pretty similar. Uh, well, I mean, I guess if you're counting Blue Goku UI as a shell, then then it's exactly the same, right? You're both playing Blue Goku UI, um, and you're both playing UI B. And so you both have like this diagonal assist, right? Of this diagonal assist at any given time. You just ignore ignore this group. Um, but he also has TN, right? Just horizontal. Right. You do not have TN, but you do have hit, which is strong horizontally. Uh, but it's a mid-range assist, right? And so your focus uh, in this match should be um, move into the mid-range, right? Because he can't. It's really hard for him to contest your mid-range when you have hit assist up because it's fucking invulnerable lariat assist right it's very difficult to deal with <clears throat> and so when you go into matches and you're playing the neutral like this you should be focused on you know playing from like half screen length instead of full screen uh, it would be a little bit more better because he's playing double beam you are not playing double beam but you do have something to help you like win out in a certain range i mean you see how how effective hit that's the first thing. Second, going hand in hand with that, when you call an assist, you need to move with it. Uh, and what I mean by that is there are a lot of situations where you're like back here and you call blue Goku A mm -mm, and it hits him here, right? It actually hits them, but then you don't start moving until after it already hits them, right? And so the problem, the problem with that is that, yeah, like they get SKD'd, uh, but they still have all the tech options available, right? So they could still up tech, they can still delay tech. They can do all of that. And so like, it takes time for you to get all the way over to them, right? And then after that, you have to worry about having enough frame advantage to actually cover a tech option. And most of the time you're not going to because you're you're, you're spending all the frame advantage that you have getting close to your opponent in the first place. So what I want you to do is when you start calling these assists, right? Already be ready to move during the assist call, right? 
because the difference between you being back here when the assist makes contact and being here when the assist makes contact is very different because they get hit they get skd'd and then you can just micro dash forward and be ready to cover traditional skd tech options right that'll make a huge difference whenever you're when you're transitioning from um neutral hits into into knockdown situations it's a very big deal um there are so many so many situations where uh, you got a straight you got a straight hit um <clears throat> you got a straight hit with an assist but you were not close enough to get any type of advantage out of it and so since you didn't get any type of advantage out of it you're pretty much just burning an assist for nothing right you're, it's not doing anything for you you're not getting any type of advantage and so that assist is as good as dead and so you need to make sure that you're within range so that you can actually do something uh after the assist big deal um <clears throat> Your sparking transition was a little bit, a little bit greedy, right? I like that you're actually running sparking offense. Uh, you're going for your, you know, your assist super jump mix-ups. So that's all fine. Uh, but 2M is greedy. Just 2L, trust me. <laughs> Just 2L, whatever you do in the 50-50, um, you'll get the hit a lot more in those situations. Um, be careful about your opponent's invulnerability as well. So you're playing hit. And so you're used to people having to respect your invulnerability at like pretty much all times because a lot of people just don't know how to fight hit uh and a lot of people will like super super dash into like ex kick and stuff like that but you also need to pay attention to your opponent's invulnerability right your opponent uh get your opponent being space uh, actually chose like successful invulnerability more times than you did and i'm looking at your team and that should not be the case because you're playing hit ui right so most of the time whenever you choose invulnerable reversals like you should be landing with those way more often than he is um and, and that just goes hand in hand with like knowing all knowing all the options that you have available to you right there's so many different things that you can you can do like incorporating 214 hl on ui into your gameplay will be very beneficial um just because you stance doesn't mean you always have to kick right that's really important um <clears throat> um stancing too much right is another issue that you you have a little bit of an issue with so hit has a lot of shit that is like cool and fun to do and everything but sometimes the best thing to do is to just move right sometimes like sitting full screen and doing stance over and over and over again is like like whatever like what's gonna be more effective and threaten your opponent more is just like taking space from them just moving forward and threatening with your presence right threatening with presence is really really strong in this game people panic so if if you're if you have a good movement and you move in on your opponent especially while they are in some type of recovery right a lot of people are going to do anything possible to not get locked down and not take a block string and so we can focus on punishing those panic options that come as a result of that instead of just sitting full screen and hoping that they get hit by like a full screen tied to time or that they don't know how to react and block cross up on on kick right this stuff is using your movement is always going to be more consistent it's always going to be more consistent. so i don't want you to tunnel vision on like pressing a bunch of stuff back here when you know especially when the opportunity arises um <clears throat> to take space from your opponent hit does not want to be full screen against people like, he, he just doesn't right the character is not really built for long range yes he has a counter and everything but there's a lot of way counter can get blown up um <clears throat> and so you want to focus on once again moving into that mid-range where your buttons are actually effective where your 5m hits your 5h hits um things are just overall way harder to react to right and so you should focus on that instead of just you know sitting full screen and pressing stance over that being said don't be lazy with your movement right <clears throat> do not be lazy with your movement um <clears throat> because if you're just mindlessly running forward there's a lot of ways you can get stuffed right you want to focus on angles of approach there's a lot of different ways to move in on someone there's dash jumping right if you want to take a more vertical route there's moon jumping or super jumping um <clears throat> there, there's there's a lot of different angles of approach right and so don't tunnel vision on just doing one because then it gets really easy to respond uh and stuff out approaches but if you're good at mixing up between the the main angles of approach you'll have a lot better time by uh, just kind of getting in on your opponent and you, you'll get in in situations where maybe you didn't even necessarily think you could have gotten uh from there I mean, it, 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 it is what it is. I mean, you submitted the set to me, so I, I'm just evaluating based on what you sent to me. Um, you know, high, high MS and all that is is rough and everything, but this is what you sent to me. So I'm just going off of what I'm seeing. Um, <clears throat> so I think those are, yeah, th those are those are like the main things you need to work. Most of them are like positional uh, slash um, movement things. Like on defense, it didn't seem like there were anything. There was anything too too major. Um, 
aside from the invulnerability thing that i that i talked about earlier uh you can maybe be a little bit obvious a little bit less obvious on like when you choose to tag um your tags were a little a little, a little telegraph but we uh, we've all been there before uh but yeah mainly mainly it's just neutral positioning i think is your is what you're having the most trouble with um and yeah you, you can't give you can't give them too many chances to there are a lot of hits that were not confirmed into so like right this this will this will naturally get better whenever whenever you start moving with your assist is you'll start getting more um you'll start getting more full conversions off of your assist and you'll kill your opponents faster because right now you have to feel like you're hitting your opponent too much uh you know it should take less hits for you to actually kill someone but... all right what's up what's up super chunk where you been bro three months back bro you're trying to shoot someone i mean you, you know where to go bro you're all too well versed with that but all right people that is the analysis session for today so for those of you who don't know my uh my queue is extremely large this week i had nine sets in the queue and so i cannot do that all in one day i will literally explode so i'm gonna do the second half of the analysis for this week uh, either tomorrow or friday so uh if you want more of this make sure you tune in and uh yeah i'm gonna boot the cloud so we can play here mm -mm. deployed and traveling ah, i see my man's going through it hopefully things are going all right for you out there but you were you were here really often at one point and then you just disappeared bro i'd be worried <laughs> i'd be worried about y'all whenever y'all do that i'm like what the fuck happened it is crazy out here bro I don't know if uh, I don't know. I'm, I know you know who Isaac is, but I don't know if you heard. But he 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 got out recently, so got the fuck out of there. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm gonna turn off my fucking heat. I'm sorry, it's very hot. Might, I might have to like, I might have to switch. Uh, I might have to switch to like two scheduled analysis days per week from here on. If queues are gonna be like this, always like, yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> I need more time. Uh, I definitely, uh, it, it's definitely a, a very humbling thing that so many people wanna want my input on their gameplay. It just takes a lot of time. Uh, coaching slots, formal coaching slots are probably gonna open by the end of the month. Um, am I charging for analysis? No, so analysis like this is just for subs. Something that I've always done just for subs. Uh, but my coaching sessions are charged uh, on top of that. Mm -mm. But this is this is just like uh, just like small critiques usually. I go my <laughs> anyone that has ever gotten a lesson from me will tell you that my coaching sessions are way more in depth. And some of you might be like, how the fuck could it be more in depth than what he's already doing? But they're pretty intense. Like. <laughs> 